Indie Shield. That's my own controller for the Indie Mill, but actually not only for the Indie Mill, for any CNC machine that you want to use it with. Thanks to screw terminals, it's super easy to connect like TB6600 stepper motor driver or any other stepper motor driver to this controller. And that's actually just a shield for Arduino Uno. So it's super easy just to plug it to the Arduino, upload GRBL, then connect everything with cables, securely with screw terminals, and you are ready to go. I have the PCB for the Indie Shield actually right here. JLC PCB sent me those PCBs and they're actually the sponsor of this video. Thanks a lot for that. And we'll solder those PCBs. I will test if everything works fine. I will upload JRBL to the Arduino to test if, you know, actually every pin is properly connected. And at the end, I have something special for you. Let's start. It is so perfect. I tried possibly every single color of the solder mask, like blue, yellow, red, white, green, and the matte black is just the best of all. I love the matte black PCBs. And as always, it's perfect, you know, when you order PCBs, those are always super, super nice. Around here, we have the screw terminals and on the back, of course, I added the 5 volts and GND screw terminals just in case maybe you want to connect let's say a relay and control a spindle with this thing so 5 volts and gnd is very useful for that and also i added the i square c port right there you never know when you need i square c it's very useful and everything is right here clearly labeled you have the voltage in probe x y z end stops so you can also connect end stops but i will of course do on the indie mill here you have the connectors for the motor for the X, Y and Z and of course if you want to mirror the Y axis you just need to connect two cables to every single screw terminal. Here we have the start hold buttons, spindle enable, cooling, spin direction and reset. And of course we have the holes for the gold pins that will attach the Arduino to with and some holes for the screws. And that's it for the PCB. Not really sophisticated, not a lot of connections, it's actually quite simple, quite nice looking, tidy PCB. I tried to pack everything so that it's not really that big. And now I will show you how it looks like on the computer when it comes to the schematic and PCB layout and then we'll solder this thing. Here is the schematic, as I said it's extremely simple, that's probably one of the simplest PCBs that I've ever designed, I think so. Everything is divided to sections so that it is super easy to see where everything is connected. Here are the end stops, as you can see, just a limit switch is connected to the GND. What else do we have here? We have the control section, I mean those are the buttons for reset, hold, start, cool and probe. Let's move on. Here we have of course the stepper motors with the enable pin, GND, here is the i square c And right here on the bottom we have the spindle, and that is for the spindle direction and spindle enable pin. And that's it for the schematic, as I said, extremely simple, but simple is not a bad thing. Let's move on to the board. So here is the board, of course, after clicking where it is the rustness comment. Here it is. You also see all of the GND and the VCC on the other side of the board. So there is really not a lot of connections. Let's move on to the bottom. As you can see, just few connections on the bottom, few connections on the top. But that actually makes it super easy to connect without any modification of the original GRBL shield. I know that some people may really love that I make a video about such a simple PCB. But it's great, you know, it's simple but it's also extremely useful for the whole Indie Mill project. It will simplify all of the connections a lot. It will be secure thanks to the screw terminals. And I hope it will be useful not only for me for the Indie Mill project but maybe for you for your own CNC project that you are working on. So now we can move on to soldering. Usually when I'm soldering I tell you that you should start with the smallest components first and that's usually true but in this case there is a lot of screw terminals so I think it will be easier for me to start with actually screw terminals. And here is a small tip, you have those two port screw terminals let's say you can easily connect those together like so there is a small tab on the side and small hole on the other side so you can connect them and create you know four or maybe even six port screw terminal 
just like this and now you can easily just plug this to the PCB like that and solder it. Soldering that, 100% fun. It was, you know, like 30 minutes of just playing with soldering iron and soldering the PCB. Like I will put on, if you imagine the scale of soldering, let's say, this project was exactly right here. Here we have projects with so small amount of components that it's not really fun to solder them. You just can't enjoy the process. And right here we have projects with hundreds of SMD, super small SMD components that are hard to solder. You can't enjoy it because you think so much about how to solder each component. But this thing was exactly right here in the sweet spot between super simple and super hard. It was, it was great. Only THT components. Even a total beginner can solder something like this without any problems. And one thing I told you that soldering the screw terminals firstly is a good idea. Well, it's not. I had to maneuver a lot with the soldering iron in order to solder the gold pins later after soldering the screw terminals. So definitely start with gold pins and then move on to screw terminals. Another thing, I cut the ends of each screw terminal, of the legs of the screw terminal. Uh, and that's a good thing to do because those are quite long. But there is still a problem because when you connect that to the Arduino Uno, those connectors of the Y-axis end stop touch the case of the USB socket and that's something that shouldn't happen definitely. So I will put a piece of tape on the Arduino Uno right there on the USB socket and that should be fine. But why does it happen? Because I used normal gold pins for this shield and there is actually a version of gold pins with longer pins and with headers on the top and those are meant for shields for the Arduino. I don't have anything like this right now, I already ordered those. So now it's time to connect the stepper motor and stepper motor driver of course. Uh, then I will burn the GRBL on the Arduino Uno and we'll see if in the shield is fully working. But before we jump into that, a quick message from the sponsor of this video. At jlcpcb.com you can order professionally manufactured PCBs for as low as $2 for 5 boards. They have really clean, easy to navigate website with a decent Gerber viewer so that you can check if your files are ok before placing an order. You can choose from green, red, blue, yellow, white and black solder mask at no additional cost. Also multi-layer PCBs, PCBA that means PCB assembly and SMT stencils are not a problem for them. And they produce those boards faster than my procrastination would make them at home. Check out the link to jlcpcb.com in the description and visit their website. Thanks a lot jlcpcb.com for sponsoring. Now I will connect NEMA 23 stepper motor to TB6600 driver exactly the same way like I did it in my last video, you can find it somewhere here or in the description. And for that I will use the original motor cable to connect motor to the stepper driver and then you can use any kind of cable to connect the stepper motor driver to the shield, to the indie shield, because you have screw terminals and that's cool. You can use this kind of cable, you can use like, I don't know, this kind of cable or even this, but this maybe this one is too thin. You can even use breadboard cables, male breadboard cables, like seriously anything you want.
motor to this stepper motor driver connection is pretty simple, just four cables, nothing to do wrong with that. Then we have the DC socket, I will power this thing, as for now with 12 volt, 2.5 amp power supply, such a small thing, I use this on my Eggbot project, and in the Indy mill I will most likely use this monster. This is 12 volt, 30 amps power supply, an overkill for sure, uh, but I have this for a long time when I was building the Dremel CNC I bought it. And you know, I just have it so I will use it, but probably like 12 amps power supply also would be enough for this kind of motor, I mean four of these motors. Everything is connected, GRBL is uploaded to the Arduino and I open CNC.js, I am connected to the Arduino, so that's good. And now, after connecting this 12 volts to the stepper motor driver and moving the Z-axis, I should be able to rotate the motor. And I am, so it is working. I just changed the cables, right now it is connected to the Y-axis motor, so let me plug the USB cable and power supply. So now the same motor should be controlled as Y-axis motor. I'm really happy that Indy Shield is working fine because it will highly, highly simplify the build of the Indy Mill. Hopefully the electronics part will be really clean and you know I want to close that in a box, hopefully that will be a good idea. Uh, as for now, in the shield, 100% success. Thanks a lot for watching, as always I will be selling those PCBs on my Tindy store, so there is link in the description, but I also promised you something special, so I will give away three of those PCBs on my Patreon, so if you are my Patreon, thanks a lot for supporting me, and if you are not, you want to get a free PCB, go there, there is also a link in the description. There is really not a lot happening on Patreon, I don't have a lot of ideas on what to do there, so I thought a small giveaway would be nice. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, happy making, bye!